This episode of One on One is brought to you by ATV. Let's talk about curves, weight, African women, and that whole weight issue because it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And I just want to say right now that your weight does not define you. You must embrace the body that you were given. It's, it's one thing to be healthy. It's another thing to be sick. Yeah, but how sick do we... It, yeah, but how do we interpret that when we see all these model shots of you guys in Milan and they all like picture perfect? Thin. Well, let me just first say Photoshop is everybody's best friend. So don't <laughs> believe everything that you see, especially for... So what Tracy's doing is the real deal. There's no <laughs> Photoshop here. <laughs> this is the real deal. And that's okay. Well, I've seen the contours beginning. Yeah. Dun, da, da, da. Two little cheeks. Very wow. <laughs> Very Kim Kardashian, but it's okay. Nice. It, it, it really does do wonders for the Not face. Kim Kardashian, the cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so, so weight isn't a big deal to you? It's not. Healthy I, is? Yes, healthy is more important to me than being sick than being Did you have to watch what you're eating when you're in Milan? Oh God, no. Why would I do that? You're in Italy. It's like pizza, pasta, <laughs> everywhere. Why so you ate I, what you wanted? I was going crazy. What's your I favorite food? Ooh, I love the Napolita Nap Napolitan pizza. That's uh -huh. my favorite. With a beer? No, not with beer. Beer is the one thing that I do not condone with the wine? it gives you a belly, but with lots of wine. Lots of red wine. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we kind of just jump into that subject. You know, there's a lot of abuse here. We don't use, we abuse. But you kind of get in Europe that there is a different sort of mindset to... Totally, I agree. Um, I think for them it's more of a... It's something that they do to enjoy, not so much that they do to disconnect from life. Right. Here it's about letting go of your problems and forgetting your worries and being somebody that you're not, just letting, like, letting yourself go free. Right. There it's more about relaxing with friends, enjoying company, enjoying the food. So and I'm loving this whole podcast. side because you've worked out life. Now listen to this. You saw a little lady walking on the road yes. and you picked her up and here she is today. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. I mean, she's, she's gorgeous. She's just, even without the makeup, she is really, really beautiful. And I Does she know. talk? Hello. Noku. <laughs> yeah. Noku talks. She's actually studied finance at university. It's amazing. So you can have beauty and brains. Exactly. And that's the best package too, because you, you, you're better equipped to make the right decisions with right. your careers. So let's just talk, how did you get into modeling from the pageants and, you know, why modeling? Actually, I started when I was in high school. I just used to do pageants and I would win most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when I moved here to Harare, um, I never really took modeling seriously because my parents really don't support it. But now, they actually are supporting it because I told them about Halima. But Halima yeah, just saw wow. you walking down the road, yeah. right? Isn't that crazy? What, what, what got your eye? You know, I think for me, it's, it's trying to shift from what we have in the industry at the moment, which is very saturated with non-models. And by that, I mean it's, it's people who have been told what a model should be, and it's not really what a model is supposed to be. And so you find that the people we have in the industry, sometimes they lack the experience or they lack the right knowledge, or they've just been forced into it because of family situations or they think they need it. So you're going back to passion right yes. now. Almost purpose and passion exactly, combining. Exactly. And it's important for somebody to groom them so that they can get jobs outside of Zimbabwe. Because what happens is that if they stay here, then they start shifting and getting into all sorts of scandalous situations. Right. Because they haven't had the proper grooming. They don't, know who, they come back to, they don't know who I am. My, uh, my image is under attack. Yes. I'm going to put you on a spot right now. Okay. Completely different thing. Commercial break with the face. Give us right now, you're doing a fashion shoot mm -hmm. right there. Give us sad face. Model sad face. Okay, give us, <laughs> give us, you haven't been paid for 90 days and you're a Zimbabwean chief financial officer. Give us a Politburo expression. <laughs> I love it. Give us a super sexy, this is a great product I'm marketing look into camera. I love this hair too, though. Okay. Give us intellectual. Well, you still need glasses, but I'll just pretend. Give us happy. Isn't that amazing? So, <laughs> did you have to look in the mirror? I mean, guys, let's talk a little bit. Tracy, do some of your models that you work with, do you, do you tell them to look in the mirror to see themselves so that they can actually do these things? Absolutely. It has to come out naturally. It's got to be natural. It has to be natural. I agree. The model has to know their body and their face. And once they know their angles, it's easy for them to, to kind of mimic different kinds of emotions. So looking at your face structure, you have to see, is, are you better face on? Are you better three quarter? Are you better with half? And once you know those things, you don't have to actually sit there and practice. We do encourage it. But the problem with practicing in the mirror is that you, you can see what you're doing. When you're on set, you can't see what you're doing. 
So it's important to have somebody to also bounce off of these things off of. Whereas in, in, in other people's minds, the other agents' minds, they want them to practice in the mirror, and the mirror does not really help you. It actually hinders you because it forces you to look okay. and see where you're going wrong, and you can't do that on set. You need experience. Now I'm going to go to what everyone wants to know. Let's talk about dating. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's start from Europe and then move it back into the African context. Then we're going to come to the whole Miss Zimbabwe and Zimbabwean pageants, but let's start with European dating as a model, is it a crazy scene or is it pretty disciplined or does it vary? Because we get the idea that everyone's on some sort of joint and life's pretty messed up. Is that the case? Actually, it varies. The only problem is the models that we are exposed to are the ones who are out there with their personal lives. And so we in interpret that as every model in Europe or every model in America being crazy and party crazed and, and all of that, which is really, really wrong because actually there's a lot of other models who are working but have very decent lives and are very quiet and reserved and keep their professional away from their personal and they they lead very very respectful and they can have happy, happy relationships indeed monogamous Those them are even like married to marriage or married and they they spouses support their their careers so it just kind of depends but we're exposed to all the fun stuff of course right so we don't know that yeah africa oh africa yeah it's 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 yeah it's crazy yeah <laughs> It's really, really crazy. Most models are single or are serial daters. Well, I don't know if that's... Serial daters? <laughs> well, yes, because nobody wants... Their, that's not their have model a model for breakfast, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody wants to have their model girlfriend or boyfriend um, working. So you either have to stop working or you, you have to date different people. So you're just dating. Because if you were to settle down, you'd have to stop your career because it's like connotations attached to modeling not so encouraged. How do we break out of that? I think we need a shift in one, the kind of exposure we give our models, as well as the kind of image we portray as models. So it's both sides of the coin. It's not enough for us to, to expose, to, to give them good exposure. It's, they also have to take the initiative to become better people. Okay, well let's just pick up on that. Hi Noku, back to you. Okay. Rich Sugar Daddy approaches you at University of Zimbabwe, which does happen, I'm told. Are you going to fall for the bait? I'm saying super rich. I don't think so. If he was younger, yes, but <laughs> not older, no. So young prince comes into your life, offers you the world. Pretty tempting, right? Yes, definitely. What are the chances of that succeeding? It depends if he wants to settle down with me or not. Because I would want someone who's serious with me, not to treat me like a doormat. Now. Let's ask you a question, and I'd love the viewers to have your response. If you're a beautiful model, and every guy in Harare, or in Abuja, or anywhere else, sees you, wants you, basically, physically, as well as the emotional and mental side, the same way he gets you is probably the same way he's going to get his next conquest, right? Yes. So, it probably isn't a long-term thing, is it? Yes, it won't be. So, do models know that when they go into a dating environment? I really think it depends with an individual at the end of the day. What you really want out of a relationship. Yeah. Okay, so it's coming back to this whole image thing. You've got to have an image for your life. You've got to have a vision for your life. If you don't have that vision, someone else is going to give it to you and you'll probably run with it because for right now it looks pretty good. Yes, indeed. All right. It's a Tracy. very slippery slope. It is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Tracy, yes. what are we doing right now? Right now we're going to do her eyes. And then we're going to do her eyebrows, then blush, lipstick, and we'll be done. Wow. You'll see the transformation. Could men actually go through this as well? Of course. African woman, hair extensions, the whole issue of identity. Halima, you've been on both sides, the Atlantic and here. Let's talk about hair extensions. I love it, but I don't fully understand it. Where are we at? So the whole extensions thing kind of stemmed from the relaxers. And relaxers were used on African slaves who worked in the household so that their hair looked more appropriate for the working environment. And then that switched to, well, if I don't have that crack on my hair, um, how can I make, transform that on, onto another material? So then they started with the weaving and the extensions. And now African women have gone into this whole Brazilian, Peruvian, Mongolian craze, and everybody wants this 21-inch extension added to their hair and there's nothing wrong with that if you're doing it it's you know, fashion yes it's fashion it's where it's, the trend is gone exactly 
It's but your mama never had that. No, she, and she never will. She hates extensions with a passion. Thanks, thank God. Um, but I think it's important to realize that if you're using it to mask your identity, then you need to take a step back and ask yourself why. Because you don't need to have that long lustrous hair. You weren't born with it. And it's not, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that. You need to embrace your curls, you need to embrace your natural hair. And I know people probably think... So Tracy, what? that's your natural hair right now, right? Yes. Do you wear extensions? Not anymore. Why? I've decided to have a new identity. I love myself for who I am, the African woman that I am. So I don't have to curl my hair, I don't need to put chemical. So, yeah. I actually went bald. So my wow. hair is quite actually growing from... Seems like I cut it bald. So again, it's a self-expression thing, but the key issue, ladies, is know thyself. Exactly, exactly. And the rest follows. Exactly. And people might be looking at me right now asking, but you have braids in your hair and you're talking about embracing your natural hair. I normally have my natural hair in. This was actually a product that was given to me by a particular company. And I thought, well, in honor of that, I'm going to put it in my hair. But I... I, I, I you like both. I like both. So I when you're wearing this, you love this. When you wear that, you love that. Yes. But this is not to mask my natural hair. This is to embrace something different in fashion. Right. I really like the whole ombre effect they did on the braiding. And I thought it will look really, really amazing. But I don't use it as a mask. There's a difference. I'm not masking anything. I'm embracing it all with my, with everything else that comes along with me.